comfortable here. My name is Dick Hanshaw, and I am the president of the Charlotte chapter of ISBI. Um, I want to welcome everybody here tonight because it's numbers like this that makes this whole thing work. I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to tell you why we formed the chapter and what our vision is for it. We formed the chapter for three things, programs, programs, and programs. We are all about the, the semi-monthly program. We will have networking, we will have a job board, we have a great website. Um, we will be developing our relationship with students and faculty at UNC Charlotte. Uh, we are still inventing those things and making it up as we go along, and we need your help. Um, we need people to volunteer for committees. We want as many people involved as possible. Uh, we have 20 people on our executive committee, which is our board, already. Um, that is by design, because we are trying to build in good succession planning, and we know that the more we share the work, the more people are active and their voices are heard. So, the next thing I'd like to do is introduce Guy Wallace, who's going to introduce our speaker. Where's Michael, Lindsay? It's my pleasure this evening to introduce our speaker. I first met Tiagi, Siv Asylum Tiag Rajan, if I got that even close, uh, affectionately known as Tiagi. I first, I first saw Tiagi in 1980 when I went to my first, at the time, NSPI conference. And I've made it a habit at every conference, and I've only missed three conferences in all these years, but I make it a habit to go to at least one of his sessions because I always learn something that I can integrate into my own practice. And I think that uh, I, you probably know him by reputation, but he is the resident mad scientist at the Tiagi Group, an organization with the mission of helping people improve their performance effectively and enjoyably. Tiagi's long-term clients include AT&T, Arthur Anderson, the Bank of Montreal, Chevron, IBM, Intel, United Airlines, and Liberty Mutual. He's worked with more than 50 organizations in high-tech, financial services, management consulting areas, consulting and conducting training in areas such as right-sizing, diversity, creativity, teamwork, customer satisfaction, human performance technology, and organizational learning. <coughs> He's published 40 books, 120 games and simulations, and more than 200 articles. He wrote the definitive chapters on simulations and games for ISPI's Handbook of Human Performance Technology and ASCD's Training and Development Handbook, and the American Management Association's <coughs> Human Resources Management and Development Handbook. He currently writes a monthly online newsletter, Tiagi Game Letter. In his fifth year, it features many of his games and other creative interventions that deliver results quickly and effectively. He currently edits the simulation game section in Sage's publications journal, Simulation Gaming. He's also a contributing editor of the monthly journal, Educational Technology. He's a regular presenter at Lakewood's training conferences, ASTD, and ISPI. He's been the president of the North American Simulation and Gaming Association, the Association for Special Educational Technology, and twice he has served as ISPI's president, back in 1978 and 79, and then, was it 2005 and 6? What were you thinking? <laughs> He's an international, internationally recognized expert in multinational collaboration and active learning in organizations. He's lived in three different countries and consulted in 21 others. Tiagi considers ISPI to be his professional home took this right off of his website. In return, ISBI has found various ways to recognize and reward Tiagi. His association with ISBI began in 1963 was when, as a high school teacher in India, he started writing program instructional materials. Later, he adopted the same strategy for designing materials for use by family planning workers. Susan Markle, the late Susan Markle, uh, NSBI president at the time, praised Tiagi's innovative approaches to group-based program <coughs> materials and nonverbal program materials. In 66, while conducting training programs in India, Douglas Ellison discovered Tiagi and invited him to be his graduate assistant at Indiana University's program teaching project. <clears throat> in 68, much to his surprise and to his professor's irritation, all three of his conference submissions were accepted by ISPI, <laughs> launching him as a regular presenter at ISPI conferences. As an NSPI vice president, he has organized one of the spring conferences as a track chair 
He created several experimental forums, including the 99 seconds presentations. As an officer of NSPI, Tiagi had the privilege of conversing with and learning from such pioneers as B.F. Skinner, Tom Gilbert, Bob Mager, and Joe Harless. Since 68, he's missed only one conference. He currently holds the record for the most concurrent sessions, the most encore presentations at the conference, the most pre-conference workshops, the most master series presentations, the most keynote presentations, and the most crowded Cracker Barrel sessions. I can attest to that. Tiagi guest edited an early issue of NSPI's quarterly journal, Improving Human Performance. Later, he served as the editor of NSPI's journal and ISPI's performance and instruction for more than 10 years, until he was fired. <laughs> he, ISPI has presented several awards to Tiagi for his work in human performance technology. He's received the Outstanding Organization Award, Outstanding Research Award, and Outstanding Member Award. ISPI has also recognized Tiagi with its highest award, the Honorary Life Member Award. And finally, Tiagi was one of the first group of professionals to receive ISPI's Certified Performance Technology Technologist designation. Please stand with me and welcome Tiagi. be here and my main goal is to see if I can drive Guy crazy and see if he can follow me on his camera. <laughs> <laughs> using all kinds of calculus and uh, <laughs> okay. than working me. so far. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. Thank you, Guy. Guy has been a mentor of mine, and I know no person is a prophet in his own community, but he is one of the best to have the secrets. Guy knows a lot. He knows a lot about human performance technology. Thank you all for coming here. This is exciting. I always wanted to be in on the basement level of a startup corporation. This is uh, wonderful and uh, so nice to see so many people and uh, a few people I recognize and so on and so forth. So enough of that. <laughs> How many of you here are performance technologies? Wonderful. How many of you <coughs> during the last uh, 72 hours have uh, messed with somebody else's behavior, tried to change uh, how they work, how they behave, how they pick up uh, all the dirty clothes from the floor, <laughs> and uh, obviously not for your own good, for the good of the other people. How many of you have been messing with other people's behavior? <laughs> good. That's my pre-test post-test. <laughs> so if you have been doing that, you are a performance technology. <laughs> That's all that is to be. Every person I have met is a performance technologist. If you are a human being, you've got to be a performance technologist. And the best of performance technologies I had the fun of interacting with is my grandson. He is uh, four years and a half old and he has figured out uh, a systematic contingency management. <laughs> he knows how to modify my behavior. He uses uh, a variety of uh, different alternative reinforcement systems and our stimuli. And uh, so we are all human performance technology. And if that is true, how come we have the International Society for Performance Improvement? And how come we got CPT designation? Because we want to make it into a mistake. 
if you tell everybody you have performance technologies, we cannot charge for our consulting. <laughs> so that's all that is to wait. And I'm going to give you the basics of human performance technology. By the way, today is Thursday. Thursdays I don't use PowerPoint slides. So if you came here to be subjected to death by PowerPoint, you are going to be sorely irritated and surprised. Mark, you look like a strong man. Can you give me a hand, please? This is my special audio-visual platform. <laughs>
15 out of 25 not used, but you did great. Oh. <laughs> and let me tell you, Jason, my grandson, that's it, in 52 seconds. He's a show off, isn't he? Yes, the whole thing. So, we are going to do in-depth analysis of Lisa's behavior now. <laughs> there is a very simple question. What prevented Lisa from accomplishing the task within the given period of time? Previous experience? Oh, lack of. A lack of previous experience? Obviously, she had never played with these kind of devices. She had a deprived childhood. <laughs> okay, lack of previous experience. There are actually 27 reasons. So, so yes, sir? I was going to say, and had not getting, gotten any kind of uh, instruction on how to, or some basics okay. about how to do it. Very good. Lack of training. <laughs> yes? Outside stressors. Outside stressors, could it be specific? Well, he, you, know, he, you, were, <laughs> you were talking about uh, her Yes, but blame it all the, on the facilitator syndrome. Okay, that's one. Yes. Her attitude. I, I knew she had some attitude. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Organization. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Organization. So this was all messed up. Time of day. Time of day. Wow. Are you a morning person or an evening person? I'm pretty much a, like a 6.30 person. Oh, good. Yes, ma'am. Oh, no reward or she didn't know why she was doing it. Oh, okay. No reward and no meaningfulness. I like it. Uh, and yes, Ted? There was a physical criteria that you put on her for Oh, for okay. the, the physical criteria. <laughs> yes? Lack of practice. Lack of practice. Any other reason? No successful models about... No um, successful model? <coughs> Hello, Anu. Anxiety about everybody else watching. And yeah. Straight fright, anxiety. What about inappropriate criteria? Yep, blame it on the facilitator. <laughs> inappropriate <laughs> criteria. The criteria were not clearly explained. Lack of feedback. Yes. She just didn't like the game. She did not like it. Goes back to her attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't like the task. No coaching. No coaching. Lack of incentive. Lack of incentives. Hmm. Anything else? Yes. Minimal group support. Minimal group support. <laughs> Hello. Noisy clock. Noisy clock. And that you probably in noisy clock. Size of the pig, size of the hole. Size of the pig, size of the hole.
every chance at, at the appropriate time. <laughs> and the whole country is becoming socialistic. <laughs> Before you know, there will be seven people trying to put the peg in <laughs> So, this again qualifies you to be a human performance technologist. One of the major criteria for becoming a human performance technologist is how many wimpy excuses <laughs> can you come up with for not doing something or even the empire is not doing something. And the variety of excuses, this is called the cost analysis. And given that, oh, by the way, let us have some fun. What else could we have done in order to make this uh, a, a, a task which is impossible to perform? Anything, anything diabolical we could have done with the task to make sure Lisa fails miserably? Blood yeah. Blood. <laughs> put, put gloves on, not big gloves or something. Ah, give her mitts and say, Lisa studies indicate these makes increase your circulation at the fingertips, <laughs> making it easier for you to pick up all of the pegs and increases your metacognitive schema. Yes, right. Turn up the lights. Wow. Yes. Well, you could have given her pegs that belong to a different ah, yeah, you, you, you deserve a CPT. Yeah. <laughs> Sufficiently satisfied with some of the facts of the And to go totally diabolically, there are two pegs that are kind of mirror images of each other. This peg and this peg look just about the same, but they don't fit. Uh, so if you substitute that two of these pegs and took away this peg, we would drive her crazy. And she will be trying to figure out how to do that. Okay? And we could have glued this peg to the uh, table. Uh, and I'm hoping we do all of these unobtrusively. So if it's not immediately obvious, she does not know. And she could suffer great self-esteem and damage as a result. <laughs> and we could keep telling her about my grandson and all of the other things. Now, here's a tough job. If you were to improve a performance, what are different things that we can do? if you want to make it. Lisa a better right peg in the right hole kind of a person. What, what should we be doing? How can we encourage, improve, and perform? You could observe your grandson and see how he does it. Okay, good modeling behavior. We will send you a videotape of my grandson. <laughs> you can put him on pause, a slow motion, anything you want. So that's one approach we can take. What else could we do? Yes, sir. We could just fire Lisa and hire your grandson. <laughs> so, that's another wonderful approach. If the task is going to be done, that. remember we are fat cat capitalists. People don't matter. Lisa doesn't perform, downsize her. Hire somebody, preferably somebody underage, that's some developing country. <laughs> 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 could we do? Okay, where is John? John, John from Hansha. Yeah. Oh, John, your job security is at risk. You better perform very good or he's going to fire you and hire me. Yes, sir. You can improve the environment, the work environment. Yes. Better have a table with a chair. You Wonderful. Know, okay. The, mechanics yes. so the human factors aspect of it. The table at the right height, a chart to sit down, maybe magnifying glasses, maybe bigger pegs, maybe just the right kind of focus lighting. What else could we do? Yes? You can ask her what she needs. 
Okay. <laughs> this is our bleeding heart liberal empowerment. <laughs> would you like to do this activity? What would you like for us to do in order to support this properly dysfunctional behavior? Yes, sir. Uh, 100 hours a day. Okay. Good. <laughs> Set a goal in the beginning. Set a goal to begin with. Lisa, can you do this within the next 72 hours? <laughs> <laughs> we used to call it uh, shaping, successive approximation. Now, here is the tough question of all of the possible interventions that the funny term we use. We were thinking about all of the possible strategies for making Lisa do a better performance. If you were going to suggest the one idea, which one do you think will be the best idea, the most cost-effective idea, the biggest bang for the buck? If we were to uh, make Lisa perform better, talk to your neighbors and they see if we can figure out which one will be the best approach. And if you don't like, like your neighbors, just talk to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> increase her performance over time after each approximation. Very good. You all got that? No. He will give us a demonstration of what is to be done and then he will say, okay, take a day, take five minutes to do this. And then he will say, good. He will give feedback, he will do coaching. He said, good. Now let us see if we can do it in four minutes. And then he will say, let us see if we can do it in three minutes. So repeated practice with the feedback, beginning with the model. Does that sound good? There were some strange suggestions earlier. 
Dana, what did you say? Not that it is strange, but <laughs> you, you, you have to stop it. When I, what, what, the thing I said was to make it mean, meaningful. Okay. If you had a certified performance technologies, you don't use words like make it meaningful. <laughs> That's a no-no. They will excommunicate you <laughs> immediately. <laughs> they will take uh, this stuff out. So whatever you do should be funny jargon like shaping people's behavior. <laughs> making it meaningful, everybody can understand. <laughs> and making it meaningful is uh, something uh, which is not measurable, which is not in our approved list of intervention. Okay. Now that we got it all figured out. Good. Let me give you another goal we want to reach. And you guys yell out what you can do. What can we do to make sure that the Charlotte chapter of ISPI lasts for at least, how long did the previous chapter you started last? Ten years. <laughs> okay. The one before that, three. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> we want to have a sustainable <laughs> chapter. What can we make to make sure the Charlotte chapter lasts for ever, for a long period of time? What suggestions do you have? Fossilize it. I'm sorry? Fossilize it? Take good speakers. Take good speakers. Get good speakers? That one is not working. <laughs> Make it meaningful. Make it? <laughs> I wouldn't <even> say. <laughs> okay. I'm recommending to the Nationals that Charlotte chapter be closed down immediately. <laughs> Okay, make it meaningful, yes, sir. Provide people that can model successful strategies. Provide people that can model successful strategies. <laughs> you all failed my test. The most important thing in... Did you get the missing page? Oh, good. See, you did, did not have panic. It will come to you. That's an ancient Hindu saying, everything comes to those who wait. <laughs> oh, okay. So, first rule of human performance technology, don't jump to conclusions. You got to analyze the cause for the goal we are trying to use or the dysfunctional state of affairs. So, you know why we do analysis instead of jumping immediately to a conclusion? So you don't solve the wrong problem. So you don't solve the wrong, wrong problem. But the most important thing is you get to charge more. <laughs> <laughs> fix the problem. Um, there are not, not enough chargeable days and that way. So if you do an in-depth analysis. And one of the cute little diagrams gives you the human performance technology model. And that, that, that looks like a bathroom plan with lots of rectangles and arrows. Uh, not for that one with the blank, but the one that... Okay, it looks like that. Good. Okay, let us do Okay, Susie did not get number three. When did she not get number three? How many of you did not get number three? Who was in charge of number three? <laughs> if you had a dysfunctional performer, you get elected to be the chapter president. <laughs> Nobody got it, Dick. <laughs> so see, it's on the floor. Oh, okay. Now, there's an interesting
interesting finding. I asked three different people to distribute three different handouts. Ted did a great job. He distributed handouts for everybody. He gets a round of applause. And the special partnership between Ben and Marisa, Ben and Marisa, they did a great job. Everybody got happy from the And the Dick, just because I asked him to demonstrate absolutely dysfunctional behavior patterns, did a great job of controlling somebody Okay, so on that page three, or diagram three, or whatever it is called, Reference card three. Notice there is no reference card one or two. Maybe there is no. Uh, that shows the human performance technology model. So, when I ask you how can we have a sustainable charter chapter, what should we have done first? Okay. And how do we do an analysis? We find out what is the ideal state, what is the actual state. So ideally, how long should a chapter last? Forever? Maybe even after it has served its useful purpose? Uh, and what is the actual state? Yes. The short chapter, is that a sustainable chapter? We don't know. We had only one session so far. So this is what is technically called a stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> a problem nobody gives a damn. <laughs> we don't have to solve it. We don't have enough data. We don't have any indication. So why are we doing this? So human performance technology usually begins when you got a performance problem. And what's a performance problem? It is a gap between what you want, the desirable state and the actual state. This is stuff I learned from God. Okay, let us come up with, with a performance problem. I like picking on graduate student types. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I like your uh, blouse. This is Shan. And what you doing? Right now? Right now, in real life. Oh, when I'm not listening to you? Yes. I am uh, I'm a doctoral student. Congratulations. Thank you. Do you have any problem in pursuing your doctoral ambitions? Time. Not having enough time? Okay, good. Here is my friend who claims that she does not have enough time. And the Shannon, what do you mean not have enough time? Every person has the same amount of time. What do you mean not have enough time? That's a silly statement. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Time to do what? Time to research. Wow. What do you mean research? Okay. She does not have time for research. Um, at ideal state, she has all the time she, not, uh, she wants to do research. At actual state, she does not have time to research. So shall we probe on this? Okay. How much time do you think you need to do a decent piece of research? Um, I would say realistically. Don't be realistic. Ideally, <laughs> you would decide on which day. Um, ideally, 50 hours a week. 50 hours a week. And uh, for how long a period of time, Shannon? Um, hmm. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, that depends on this man right here. Um, I would say a year, year and a half. Oh, okay. 18 months, 50 hours a week. Good. 
Now, what is the actual situation? When do you want to wrap up your stupid dissertation and do something? <laughs> <laughs> um, 2011, 2010, 2011. Wow. Hmm. This is one of the dangers of sending people to graduate school. Mm -hmm. They lose track of the real world. <laughs> <laughs> and they want to do research. Okay, good. So, 18 months. Uh, do you get 50 hours a week right now? No. No. Why are you not getting 50 hours a week? Why am I not getting? Yeah. I have a two month old. Okay, good. <laughs> Excellent. The two month old, 50 hours a week. Two month old, that probably takes 200 hours a week. Yes. <laughs> okay. Here's the situation. Ideal state. 50 hours a week for the next 18 months. I could say, um, realistically, how many hours a week are you able to devote to your wonderful, idealistic, beautiful, valid, reliable, earth shaking, <laughs> revolutionary breakthrough research you are doing? <laughs> yes. Um, 10 to 15. 10 to 15. So, here is the technical definition of the gap. 50 minus 15. So she's got a gap of 35 hours. Okay, good. So that finishes our analysis and the allegation. So what type of a cause is this? Which basically means, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to keep playing soccer. So, is this a lack of skill or knowledge? Okay. Is this lack of motivation? Is it lack of time management? Huh, good, I like it. Hi, Susie. How can she? Uh, do you have children? Yes. Okay, you're fully qualified. <laughs> the young child was uh, two months old? Yes. How many? One at a time, but I had two. Oh, um, so she has uh, lots of previous experience. Obviously a subject matter experience. <laughs> so, time management. Time management for the parents of two-year-olds. So, what are some of the techniques that you could use? Partner with the father. Oh. <laughs> what? Partner. <laughs> <laughs> it's a technique you have to learn. You're really good at it. Okay. Sorry. Have you tried partnering with the father? Yes. That's what you get, got into that mess in the <laughs> Were you able to achieve that? Sorry. Were you able to partner yes. with? Okay. And how many hours a week did that release of your time? Eight, maybe? Eight. Oh. Eight. Above and beyond the 15? No, no, no. Of 15. <laughs> of 15. Okay. Uh, my first major instructional design performance technology project was in the area of family planning and contraceptive techniques. <laughs> but that intervention is probably too late now. <laughs> so back to this particular situation. So she's able to get, get eight hours of those 15 hours. Is that a reasonable amount of time which can be uptimed by partnering with uh, that husband? Sure. Okay. We do still do have problems, folks. Okay, with that 18, it's still 15. We got 35 more hours to get going. So what do we do? What are the reasons she's not able to do it? 
Okay, sleeping too much. That explains it. <laughs> Studies indicate that if you are truly a dedicated graduate student, you will not be sleeping. <laughs> Who is the chair of your committee? Good. Stop her from sleeping. Give her a pep talk. Okay, good. So that is something else which happened. By the way, this is called another stupid problem. And because I think this is a capacity problem. And you cannot be a super mom, and you cannot be a graduate student, and you cannot do a breakthrough research. I will give you secrets of how fooling your committee. And there are many techniques. And step one, give up your great need to do a good dissertation. <laughs> <laughs> the main thing is you have to jump through several hoops. And the faster you jump through them. So it is not that you need to do research, the important thing, you need to look like you have done this. That is a big difference between those two things. More I will give you uh, when the other people, when the environment is more conducive to the real secrets of the. Okay, so that was an abortive performance technology attack. And one of the ways you can do, you save a lot of money, a lot of time is to choose a task which needs, which is worth for you to solve. Writing doctoral dissertation is one of the most superfluous human behaviors ever listed. <laughs> Every year that there are thousands of dissertations. My dissertation, which was done in 1969, has never been read by any other human being. <laughs> so we got to go beyond our goal and go beyond and say, how does this contribute to the mega system, as Raja Kaufman will say. Okay, good. Back to the chapter. Today's meeting. What's that? Was this a good meeting so far? Was it well organized? Let's be kind of cynical and nasty. <laughs> you get paid more by being cynical and nasty. <laughs> so let us come up with something which could have been better in the way this meeting was organized. Other than the fact that they could have got a better speaker. <laughs> what? what could that we have that? Uh, or what? Yeah, ca come up, pretend you're a cynical person. Come up with a statement of a problem associated with the, the kickoff meeting for the Charlotte ISPR. There's no agenda. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Okay. <laughs> Take notes, said Dick. <laughs> there is no agenda. Uh, let, 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 let us pursue this. Uh, this uh, <laughs> but uh, don't forget your company. <laughs> so ideally, we should have. I'm sorry. I mean, kicking your handbag now. No. <laughs> ideally, we should have an agenda. What's the agenda for this meeting? How many of you got a copy of the agenda? <laughs> One, two, three. <coughs> Okay, good. Hey, who said there is no agenda? Get us an agenda. How come some people got an agenda, other people did not get an agenda? Good. Now, <laughs> here is a performance problem. There is no agenda. Or, eh, she crumpled up the whole agenda. <laughs> or, if there is an agenda, it did not look like an agenda. I'm sorry? It did not even use the word agenda. It wow. Okay. Good. So, ideal state 
is people get an agenda, people know it's an agenda, it looks like an agenda, it smells like an agenda. I should say, people got an agenda, they did not even know it's an agenda. It does not have the look and the feel. So, what is the cause for this problem? Poor planning. Poor planning. Hmm. Lack of training. Guys, <laughs> think that. Lack of training. Buying cheap printers. <laughs> okay. Now, seriously though, uh, that is an agenda, and maybe it was not structured to look like an agenda. Maybe it's a distribution problem. Maybe it's a layout problem. Maybe it's a printing problem. Maybe it's a problem of people not realizing it's an agenda. So let's take, what can we do to make an agenda look like an agenda? Call it what an agenda. <laughs> okay, good. It's a layout question. We call it an agenda. We got a template and that fixes the problem. So, the design of the agenda problem seems to be fixed. And how many of you got the agenda? Oh. Don got the email. It was distributed through the email. So, how many of you don't feel you got the agenda? Wow. Okay. Good. Hmm. I know you did not make the agenda. What are you doing here? I signed up. Good. Which brings us to the mega goal. The goal of running this session is to make money. And what does it matter? Anu signed up, and they earned the money, and they get three years, and so on. So back to agenda, we got to distribute it. What will be, what, what is the problem with the way it was distributed? Because many of you, it's all Sarah's fault. Many of you have no clue you got the agenda. Yeah, Sarah. Okay, good. You guys are falling asleep. Here is the next activity. Everybody clap your hand once, please. Oh, too ragged. Can you all clap your hand in total synchrony? This is your criteria, the desirable behavior. Everybody clap your hand once and only once. So people outside will hear a hypersonic boom. <laughs> and in order to enable you to do that, I'm going to give you a non-electronic performance support system. I'm going to count. I'm going to count one, two, three, and then I will say clap. When I say clap, everybody clap. Wait until I say clap. Ready? One, two, three, <laughs> <Last>. <laughs> uh, A total group of dysfunctional people. <laughs> you were supposed to say, wait until I say clap. What did you all clap before they said clap? We monitor the experts' behavior. If I jump off a cliff, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> that's not important enough right now to jump off a cliff. We were clapping our hands. Oh, the okay. criteria on solving the problem earlier. Okay, good. So, and the main reason I want to share this with you is I'm going to be blabbering. Mm -hmm. And you'll understand everything I say because, after all, this is human performance technology. <laughs> Any four-year-old kid knows how to do it. It is in the execution. Understanding is not an effort. Are you able to execute it? And so, so, ah, here is the thought. Sending out the agenda or doing anything 
is due to a number of different causes. And it could be a lack of skill or knowledge. So that is another cute little diagram which is partly blank. Good. And it looks like this. I'm sorry, Lisa. It's bad enough you all look the same. You have the same name also, just to confuse you. Okay. That is a blank diagram. And somewhere there, that is a key to PT intervention. Oh, Charles. I'm sorry. Walking away with your thing. Good. What's an intervention? It's something we do in order to improve or change people's behavior. And the last column, the rightmost column number nine through twenty-five, all of the interventions go there. The first two columns are something else. Here's your job. Can you fill in this chart using the words from this piece of paper? And uh, you've got three minutes to do that. Whoever finishes in five gets a BMW. <laughs> Well, I don't have a pen. It's going to have By the way, you can collaborate, you can cheat, you can copy each other. Ah, I don't want to put any pressure, but this lady here has completed it already. <laughs> can we see the model? Okay, folks, you can stop. We have the telecancer. And this is from Emily. Okay. What goes in the first box? Uh, improving performance. Everybody got that? Good. And what goes on the next pile of boxes? External and internal. External and internal. Okay. Which one goes on top? Internal. Internal. Sounds good. And because I say so. <laughs> ah, because if you do some kind of induction and the start the matching this and that, and if we had 50 hours a week for the next 18 months, you would have figured it all out. <laughs> so for the present, um, and we got performance problems due to ignorance, due to incapacity, and due to indifference. And as you may recall, number six is indifference. Lisa's problem was uh, her attitude. She was totally indifferent. So, um, we will uh, take a look at that. Incapacity, do you have the physical ability or the mental ability? And ignorance, do you have, if you are ignorant, the appropriate intervention, we can do training. Everybody know what training is? <laughs> That's the danger. In the human performance technology, one of the rules is training should be an intervention of the last result. The only if everything else fails, because training is not necessary. Uh, what's, this is for people from Columbus. <laughs> A job aid is a fancy word for a checklist. 
or the recipe, or the directory, or a little diagram. Okay. So you could compensate for people's ignorance by giving them a little chart or step one, look at the hole, step two, look at the, the peg, step three, put the peg inside the bowl. You traumatized me. Now I have to consciously think which comes first, hole or peg. Okay, good. We'll go to therapy together. <laughs> exactly. And you can also have education. Tell you what's the difference between education and training? So if your doctor says, I had a sex education class, that's okay. If she says, I had sex training today, that's not okay. So that's the difference between education and training. Education, the implication is, this is totally useless, it is empty inner knowledge, it is not going to be, you cannot do anything with that. Training on the other hand is something you, I almost said hands on, but let's <laughs> Okay, um, and uh, you can have an expert system, you can have communication, things of that nature. Um, you have all of those various <laughs> interventions. Is there any item in the list of interventions which you would like to challenge and ask me what the heck does it mean, and what the difference between a motivational system and an incentive system, or something like that? Anybody got any question? Okay, incentive system is the reward and the reinforcement, things that happen after you've done your job. So if I give you $10 after you put all of the pets in the right place, uh, I give you an incentive, I give you a reward. Motivation is my giving you a pet card before you start doing the pet card. So this is an artificial way of cutting uh, things. By the way, this is only one person's idea of what the interventions are. And there are lots of wonderful lists of interventions. The father of human performance technology, Tom Gilbert, has a behavior engineering model. And Gilbert has a book called The Human Competence. And there are only three people who have read it. And most people, oh, wow, make it four. <laughs> you must have been a graduate student in, in, in your recent life. So, and that's a wonderful person whose name is Carl Binder. You got to get Carl to, you, you're already getting him to Charlotte? If not, you should get him in, uh, before it's too late. Carl has taken Gilbert's behavior engineering model and he's got a little stuff called the six boxes. He's got the six types of problems that you are having, like skill, knowledge, motivation, incentive, feedback, expectation, things of that nature. And there is a book which says Performance Intervention Maps. This book goes to Shannon because she was kind enough to let me put up a great thank you. I can give it back. You've got to <laughs> You've got the kind of stuff to read. But let me give you this. <laughs> give it to the kid. You will get a lot of release time. <laughs> In the meantime, Lisa, you get this book. <laughs> Sorry, Shannon, I don't want to be an Indian giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we, 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 we have a question. Uh, yes. Instrumental intervention? <laughs> yeah. It is having uh, the tools uh, in, with which you perform your job. Do you have the right tools? So okay. that is the intra human factors, your environment, lighting, 
heat, ventilation, and do you have an Apple computer with the, yeah, Windows software? That, that, that is the instrumental innovation. Oh. Interference, instrumental interference. If you don't have the right tool, then you suffer from not having the real tools and things of that nature. And for example, going back to Lisa's wonderful experimental study, she did not have big enough pegs to put them on the board. She did not have a table raised enough to have eye level, things of that nature. So those are instrumental interference. And you can have institutional, which is uh, for the OD people here, other than Oh, what happened to my friend? Rene, did Rene escape? She must have. Good. All the people have this wonderful tendency to sneak out of the meeting room. <laughs> and I'm back. I'm back. Oh, <laughs> she's back. I was trying to cheat off the trees. <laughs> I missed it. Okay. She is an organizational design type of a person. She knows how to structure an organization. She knows how to improve communication, how to create governments. I don't know what those people do, but uh, they talk a lot. Okay, so that's uh, what she is uh, doing. Okay. Can everybody please stand up for a minute? I want to try something. I'm going to do training. Everybody see me? This is your kinesthetic training. Okay? Can you hold out your two hands in front of you? Don't hit anybody in front of you. One hand on top of the other hand. Twist your black hands and interlock your fingers like this. Good. And bring your hand like this and put your two fingers on the two sides of your nose like this. Go ahead, you can do that. And this is what I want for you to do. Without letting go of the tips of your fingers, can you release your hands like this? Okay, good. How many of you were able to do it? If you did it correctly, have a seat. If you did not do it correctly, don't worry, we got remedial instruction. <laughs> okay, one more time. One hand on top of the other.
Many of you are able to do it. Mark has this problem. <laughs> No, I tried it both ways. I tried to switch my nose this way and this way. It's still okay, this thing is called Everybody is an Expert. Everybody wants to tell Mark how to do it. Everybody does a cost analysis. Come on back. Okay, have one. By the way, this is called task analysis. This is called process re-engineering. Anu is a black belt. What is that funny thing you do? Six Sigma. Six Sigma. Six Sigma. <laughs> That's another way you can charge people a lot of money. Whereas Guy does lean. <laughs> which, which group charges more, Guy? Six Sigma. Okay. Good. Go for six sigma. This is first sigma. <laughs> Step one. So far so good. Step two. Is he doing exactly what you're doing? Yeah? Good. By the way, this is where superstitious behavior is occurring. I may go like this because my thumbs are scratching and he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're ahead. You're ahead. Okay, next step. Have your hands like this. Next step, interlock your finger. This is where Mark messes up. Uh, back to number one. Number two. Number three. Good. Get the key. The key in my process engineering, whichever hand is on top. <laughs> That little hey folks, I'm giving you the secret. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever hand is on top, the little finger of that hand should be on top. You went this way. It will screw you up. Go like this. Go like this. And in the last This is true. Okay. 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 And then, and then. Okay, so the couple of important things, when everything else fails, don't try to bribe people. Incentives are good, but using an incentive when the problem is not lack of motivation is not going to work. And then the second thing is the solution to this particular problem is not actually training, it is process re-engineering or explaining how this is to be done. You can take him through remedial instruction, you can send him to school, you can give him a pep talk, you can model all kinds of behavior, but there is only one non-value added step in the process which is not doing your interlacing of fingers. So that is just what we want to focus on. That concludes my session. Now we have seven minutes of questions and answers. You may not go until the seven minutes are done. You may as well ask a question. <laughs> something I want to do. I want to reinforce people for asking questions. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I'm looking at this model. Is this like the latest iteration of the Addy model? Okay. Addy model is evil. Addy model is a socialist conspiracy. <laughs> no. You know uh, I learned it from you, though. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here is an interesting question Ted is asking, and for people from Columbus, for no clue what Ali model is, I don't know either, but let me explain it. So, there is a thing called instructional design, which is if you want to do training, you do 
analysis, you do design, you do development, you do implementation, you do evaluation. So many people have been propagating, propagating this mistaken notion that God has set up these distinct process steps, which is our pure baloney. But that is for training design. And what is the connection between training and the human performance technology? This is the performance technology model. What is the connection? Performance technology is a broad overall concept. And the training is one component. And if we do correct OD, or if we do correct <coughs> motivational system, they all begin with the analysis and then design, and then development, and evaluation, and so on. I have been known to be an iconoclast. I don't believe in any of these models, but if I say that, Dick will not pay me. This is supposed to be the fundamentals of human performance technology. On March 31st, 2011, I'm going to have a session called Everything You Know About Human Performance Technology is All Stupid. But <laughs> in the meantime, I think you should go with the systematic instruction. This is a simplified version, Ted, and it so happens whether you are doing Six Sigma or whether you are doing OD or whether you are doing incentive system, you begin with an analysis, you do a design, you do evaluation, you do modification. So they all tend to do the same. Good. Hello. Oh, okay. That's the only reason why I won. <laughs> Thank you. This is the power of a motivational system. Even the compassionate, wonderful, honest people with the integrity become like a mad You have to give them money, and that goes at the civilization. Hello, ask a question. Okay, when somebody hires you, hmm. good question. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> so let's do a role play. You be my client. Hi. Hi. Heard you're expensive. What do you do? You're a client. You want to know what I do? Okay. What do we do? I do human performance technology. And if I say that, nobody has a clue what I'm talking about. So I don't tell people I do human performance technology. And I don't even ask people, do you have any performance problems I can fix? People hire me because I have been doing this stuff for 92 years, <laughs> and including my last life. <laughs> As I was explaining earlier, I don't believe in reincarnation, but in my previous life I used to believe in it. <laughs> <laughs> People hire me and say, can you do training? I say, yes. And I do training. Or uh, whatever I do, I call it the training. And usually what happens is I do what a damn want, call it training. It could be a motivational system, it could be OD, it could be Six Sigma, it could be anything. It doesn't matter what intervention you use, that is a training component. So if people hire me to be a trainer, I call it training. People hire me to do OD, I say, a better person is a better. Here is a telephone number, give it a call. <laughs> but if they insist I should do, OD, I go do whatever I want to and call it OD. And if they want me to do transcendental meditation, I do what I want to do and call. One of the major, major dangers we people in human performance technology are susceptible to, and one of the stupidest things we do 
is we talk among ourselves. <laughs> Nobody outside in the business world understands what we are talking about. So I never use uh, words like intervention or cost analysis or six sigma. I just tell them, you got a problem, let me solve it. And they call it, what they call it training, they say, good, let's call it training. Does it make sense? Yeah. Is it lack of integrity on my part? Yeah. Uh, my thought is I am not doing any damage to the client and I want to do something good to the client and I want to be able to talk his language. And I want to say my job is to produce business results, measurable business results. And how I get about doing it. Uh, he is not interested. And he wants to call it the master potatoes, I call it master potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else got a question? Hello. You were asking about um, ICI and how to be successful. What have you seen in other cities that have made ICI be successful and long lasting? That the top three chapters of three wonderful uh, approaches. And uh, it is in Los Angeles ISP chapter where I was, it was the strength of that program. I was in Columbus ISP chapter, it was the strength of that program. I was in Charlotte ISP chapter, it is the strength of that program. <laughs> they combined it all that. So it is program, program, location. I uh, know, program, program, program. <laughs> Actually, all kidding aside, and I think one of the best things people get out of it, they don't want to come here to have a picnic or eat the junk food. They can do it at their own place. They want some kind of improved competency. They want new concepts and principles. Give me a dollar, Dick. <laughs> you can get, send me your invoice now. <laughs> okay. Oh, I have a question for you. Hello, guys. What, what could you tell us about our future speakers that might be of interest to all of us here? Okay. Name your speakers. Judy Hale is next. Judy Hale is the person who was a president of ISPN, and one of her specialty areas is on certification on measuring people's competencies and measuring it in a very reliable, valid, applicable, objective fashion. And she was in charge, among other people, of creating CPD, ISPI's certification program. Alison Rosset. Alison Rosset has written a book called First Things Fast. She is well known for doing brilliant needs analysis. She was an ex-ISPA president. You guys get uh, all of those people who are no longer functional. <laughs> and uh, so, <laughs> Alison Rosset was another ISPA president, best known for uh, the area of expertise uh, is needs analysis, front-end analysis. She is also well known for job aid design. She is an expert. She has written a book on Java. Diane Gajewski. Diane Gajewski, one of my most favorite people. She is better than the other two because she was not an ISPN person. <laughs> <laughs> so that is still called. And Diane is the best geek I have ever seen. She is technologically savvy, she travels with that PDA, and she knew how to spell PDA long before that they were in vogue. She's a technologically talented person. She was, she's in Ithaca, uh, New York, and she's a brilliant conceptualizer in the application of technology to human performance technology. Daryl Sink. Daryl Sink. His uh, biggest claim to fame, like a Dick Hanshaw, he came from Indiana University. Uh, unlike Ted, 
and but he was smarter. He moved to California, and he does instructional design. That is a specialty. He does a course developers program, and which brings me to my last 17 seconds. Everybody up, please. Okay, this is my evaluation. I don't believe in smile sheets. This is your total body kinesthetic evaluation. Everybody close your eyes. Open your eyes. Hand around 360 degrees so you're facing the same direction you're facing. Make a fist with your right hand and bang on the left side of your chest three times so you can lower your hand and that's good. We <laughs> <laughs> got critics all over the place. So tomorrow if somebody says, how did the kickoff meeting, ISPH or a kickoff meeting go, you can truthfully say, it brought, to me, brought me to my feet. <laughs> it opened my eyes. It turned me around completely. <laughs> and it touched my heart. 